Hi, this is Misty Shitter 223. I've got all my meat and stuff together here, and we're going to get ready to start canning it and putting it away. Okay, we're, I'm just going to go over everything I have with you before I chill some of it while I'm working on it. This is my meat off of the back hams. What I do is I, I cut it off of it, and I just got my best roast meat, and I cut it up in chunks, and I can it with the rest of it. We got 60 pounds of sausage, so that was our main go. And then we got this meat here, which is your ribs. And we take our ribs and we cut them down where they're thin so I can cut them in small sections and we can those and it's really good, good eating can. And I got my back bones and my neck bone and stuff and I will cook these down, debone them, and I'll put them in a jar with the broth. And then that way it really makes good soup meat or if you're having a stir fry, you can put it in there for your little extra meat and, just, and the juice and just gives it a really good flavor. And then you got your best meat here, my two tenderloins off the back of it. And yes, we'll be eating some of this fresh, but I'll take and cut it in rounds, slide them down in my jars, and then we'll have fresh, canned, pure tenderloin meat. And uh, over here, let me glance to my freezer. I've got, this is my sausage, and they're in two pound packs. I've got a couple in the door. I've got 60 pounds of sausage in here. Two pound rolls, great way to keep it. Slice them off, easy to eat. Best way I like. I don't like canned sausage. It is good, but I like mine frozen. So we got our canning supplies. Got my canner. I got me two dozen jars. These are brand new. I've got more jars to the side if I need them. I'll take these and I'll take my rings, take my seals, and I will have them in hot water soaking on soft on top of my wood stove, keeping them warm. I got the salt. Put a little in here, and I'm gonna fill with distilled water. My with this here. And you got the canner. All right. Now I'm gonna cut for just a minute and get some of this back chill while I'm working on the other meat. And then he'll come back here in a minute and he'll fill me just a little bit, filling my jars up and stuff, and getting my canner ready to go on. Okay, we're going to get to putting this meat in the jars. I'm gonna start with this meat first. I got it cut up while we were there yesterday. Got one jar. They're done, and I'm gonna do this in the jar here for you. And uh, you want to make sure you leave a one-inch head space in your jars to give room. That way. It takes a good seal and it don't overflow. Take a knife and kind of make sure you don't get too many holes down in there. Make some space. Some of these that are just a little bigger, because when you get them all cut, I'll cut them down. Smaller. Bat size pieces. And this one right here. My canner holds seven quart jars at a time, and I'll show you that in a minute. And we put my, it calls for three quarts of water in the canner, so we put that in there to kind of be pretty and you don't want the water too hot unless you already have a hot jar of food to put in there because hot makes cold crap. Okay. A lot calls for a whole teaspoon of salt, but that's not necessary. I put a half a teaspoon in it, and I'm not just using regular iodized salt. I'm using a real salt. It is derived. You see, it's real salt. It has, see all the speckles, it has its minerals and all that in there, and it's really good for you, especially if you have a tendency of swelling. This won't make you swell, and it's just good for you all around. I would recommend anybody using it, especially salt lovers. I'm using some distilled water today. Fill your jar with water. Knife. Roll on your edges. Make sure you fill any holes. Get your air pockets and air bubbles up. That rim's clean. You don't want to have no salt or no meat around it, so that way it has a good seal. And then I will do the rest of these jars this way while my seals are on warm. And you want to note with warm of these seals, you don't want your water to boil. You just need them to be in good hot water. That yeah, that is a little hot, but I can take that and just let them heat. If you see it's getting too hot, then you want to take this off and set it to the side because this ensures your seal to get good and soft so that way it can form down around there and then when it cools it 
it seals. That's just the whole process of it. All right, I'm gonna get off here for a minute and I'm gonna finish filling the rest of these jars up and uh, we'll come back to y'all in a little bit and show you putting them in our canner and then you can see how that goes. I don't know if you're familiar with canning, any of you are or not, but I know it's way of life. Our grandparents did it and the world's got away from it, but the community we live in is just like living like your grandparents lived. So I'm going to get out of here for right this second and get this going and I'll be back in a few. Hi, all right, we're ready to put the seals and the rings on these jars. I've got them filled up with water and I got my salt. We're gonna get the canning process going. And I want you to, um, I want you to know here with this, with these seals, you know, you got nothing around that rim that's important. And if they were warm, and put it on there and you only want to hand tighten them. If you do much more than hand tighten them, they won't work right because this is gonna be cooking and bubbling up and down and your sealing process they will not seal while this is going on they seal once they come out and they start cooling when they cool it pops that seal down and you hear it and with the salt in it all the canon books and all the things do it they say put salt in it but the old timers put salt in these because in the old times they had a hard time heating and keeping their houses warm so if it froze the salt prevented their jars from freezing and busting and if something happened you did run out of heat because you had power failure or something then you're not going to lose your meat you're going to have to worry about your jars freezing because you got your salt in it to help protect it and we have we personally have been canning for 10 years even before we lived in the community and so you know it's just a way of life we've been doing. We started in West Virginia, canning deer meat. My canner takes three quarts of water, and you want to have a little bit of warm water, and then that way gives you kind of a head start. And we are going to can these for 90 minutes. If some people call for different ones, some want to can longer, some shorter. And at the front, I mean, just this one woman's perspective and view, you know, you think about it, you put a piece of meat on a skillet and you cook it for 45 minutes, it's done. If you cook it much longer, it's gonna be burned. You're putting this in here under 10 pounds of extreme pressure. And you can imagine that meat is truly cooked within 10 minutes, and that's probably too long. It's probably actually cooked within five minutes under the pressure. The purpose is to kill all the bacteria so that way it lasts. And canned meat lasts, it's indefinite though it lasts. All right, let me get my lid and make sure my arrow's lined up. Right here, like that. Over. And if you keep Vaseline around your seal, it helps it to stay right. And go opposite sides. Don't do it tight yet. I don't want to get it tight yet. And we're canning on the grill today because it just gets too warm in the house. Canning, whenever the weather warms up, summertime, this is where we do it. We are going to experiment on canning on open flame this year on our fire pit. Move that over that way. Close my lid so that it fits on here just right. Put that around here where you can see my thing. And we're going to go around here and tighten these up. Now, we'll do this. Once steam starts spewing up out of here, then I'll put my weight on here. And once you put your weight on, your pressure will start to build. You get up to 10 pounds, and then you start timing it. Once it gets to 10 pounds, you start timing it. This is my weight. It's got a 10 pound, it's got a 15, and a five. I don't know what you'd really use those for, because I think 15 is too extreme of a pressure. 10 is your perfect pressure. We will put it on here once it starts steaming, but not in and when it starts steaming, I'll come back here and I'll show you the steam coming out. And we'll put it on here and we'll look at the time and we'll start timing. And I'll be back with y'all for a little while. I'm back now. I'm going to cut these ribs up and get these into the jars. So that way I can um, get me another batch of meat on cannon. I just like to cut them in small enough pieces to make sure they fit in the jars. I kind of lay my jar over so that way you, know, you can kind of lay them in there and that way to tell to go. Oh, you just can't get enough room in them if you don't lay them the right way. And just, and if you're a wide mouth jar, then you can get them in there more. But um, use small mouths. They're small enough to fit through the hole. And that's just really good, easy. 
I'll put them at. Heat them at. Put your little barbecue sauce if you want. You're good with that barbecue sauce. Get a little smaller piece. That's why I have them. Don't leave a whole rack of ribs. That's why I'm cut down to a smaller piece. You don't have to put that much water in them because they still have the fat on the meat. I still do put you know, my half teaspoon of salt in it. I do put a little bit of water in it. It's because you don't go kill it because you don't only don't want red ribs. You just need enough to cook the meat. And that way you don't have all the extra grease and stuff to keep it. All right, I'm going to finish working on this and getting this ready. And as soon as my pressure built, my steam builds up out there, then we'll go out there and talk about that. Okay, now I'm back here and we're ready to put the weight on our canner. And you have to understand, with what I said earlier about it cooking, it's, okay, first of all, see how good hot steam's coming out. That's what you want it to be, steaming good. Because if it's not steaming good and it's just barely spewing, it's going to take a lot longer for your pressure to rise. And also, when you come, when you get these, these gauges right here are about two pounds off, and whenever um, you get up here and it's full weight, it's going to say 12 pounds. Well, it's actually not 12 pounds. I go by my jiggler. This is what you want to go by. This is true weight. When this is jiggling and it's up here, you know you're at it, then you want to reduce your heat and you want to have a nice even jiggle. You want to have about five seconds, jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. About five seconds, maybe ten, jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. You don't want it to be no longer than 30 seconds between each jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. If you have a hard, rapid jiggle, jiggle constantly, constantly, you've got too much heat and you need to turn your fire down some. That's what you want to do. And also, you know, when you're eating it, when, when it's cooking here, you have to take this into consideration. When you put this on, and while I'm waiting for my steam to come, your water is boiling, and this meat is already cooking. It's already cooked some of the way before you ever put this on there. I mean, that's, so that's why, you know, I said that, but I, I would never eat the meat if you take it out and eat it after it's been pressure canned for 20 minutes, you know, and it's going to be very tender. But you're wanting this to be sealed and kill all the bacteria and be able to last for as long as you need it to last. So that's why you want to can it for a good 90 minutes. So we're going to sit here and do this. I'm going to go in. I'm going to check my time. And 90 minutes later, we'll come. We'll get this out while I'm finished putting in my meat in my jars. And um, we will be... Um, I'll have to turn this down here a little bit, but I won't turn it down until I'm jiggling. Jiggling good. And we'll be back here in just a All right, I wanted to show you my camera. Now it's jiggling. See how it's jiggling? You want it to do this? See, it'll kind of, it's not doing it hard. This is actually doing just perfect right now. It gets you jiggling too hard, you want to turn the heat down. But we're out here, we got a little breeze. It's kind of keeping it just right. Um, sometimes we get a blockade, we stay here to kind of block the breeze. And um, the house, you're definitely going to have to watch it. And it is 1 o'clock right now, and we're going to do this for 90 minutes. So at 2.30, it'll be done, well done. And we'll take it off, and I'll show you taking it out. And uh, right now, I can show you what's going on in the house for just a minute. And um, we'll get back to this, and I'll just, I'll just take you in the house in a second. Okay, I got this meat in my jars. This is, um, this is my rib meat. My red meat, I got, let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five jars of red meat. These two jars are my meat for my hams. And I got my salt and my, still got my seals in here soaking, you know, so I don't have them on yet because um, you don't want to put them on until right before you put them in the pressure canner to can because then they already will be warm and they want to try to start cooling down. So you don't want to put the seals on until right before you put them in the canner. I also like to cover up my jars while I'm waiting for the next batch to get right, done. It's been an hour and a half, it's been 90 minutes now, and we're going to get ready and we're going to turn this off. And uh, 
Let it just sit here until it quits rattling and all the pressure goes down. This will go all the way to zero. And this will have this will go all the way to zero. And then this will have no rattling, no pressure. And when this is at zero, we'll take a, a, a pin or some, a, a metal and just kind of move it to the side a little bit just to make sure there's no extra pressure coming out. And then we'll take it off. We'll take it out and we'll open it and take the jars out and I'll come back and show you that. And then you have to dump all the hot water out there and start over fresh with three more quarts of fresh. I use warm water and start it over again and I'll cross all over. And we'll be back after a little while and show you all that. Alright, the pressure's gone down on this and like you said, see that this don't work good. There's no more steam coming out. Take that off, it's hot. Bigger. Let's just always do them opposite of each other. Well, it's hot to begin with. Steam burn. Mmm. Now that's good. So it's still bubbling. Good sign. And being out here where it's nice and cool, they will seal that. You want your stuff to seal in a cool area, not in a warm area. Down. You just can't get meat no tender than this. If you're in a hurry, you want to run in, get a quick supper, you open a jar of meat, and you can put it on to heat if you can keep your children out of it. I never have been able to. They want to eat it cold or not because it is fully cooked. I'd like for some of you to pop and you can hear them stilling. But that's my first batch. I got one more batch to go in, and then I'll have a third batch to do too. And um, while I'm waiting on this pot to cool off, I'm going to take and drain all the water out of it. I'm going to run inside, and I think I'm going to shoot my gun just a little bit, a little pressure off, a little exhaustion out of me, and just kind of get a good breath. I'll be back in just a minute. I'll run in the house. Grab a gun, shoot a little bit, and I'll get the next one going. Um, well, I've been noticing these very bad ones. They, whoop, that one sealed for me. They're sealing. You should let them do it on their own, but um, it's, some of them are already sealed while they were in the can. But um, that, that, see how that's boiling? That right there knows that you've done it right. Because if it's boiling, then it, it did good. The few that we've gotten in the past that didn't seal, they weren't boiling. But usually, that happens very, very rarely. And I tell you, take that out and you make gravy with that juice, and that is the best tasting gravy. It just gives it a great flavor. Make biscuits with it, and ain't nothing like it. Alright, this one to add that to it. Okay, my next batch ready to go on. Uh, Henry Lee in here. I'm going to go put these on while I'm waiting for the pressure to rise. I'm going to go shoot a little bit out the back door. Rain a lot and a little thunder outside a little bit. Alright, 